Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Leaky Lou here with a tutorial on how to guest alt and respec your characters in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. This is a very simple uh, uh, thing that you can do. Uh, basically, guest alting, what it is, is uh, every every level up, your character and all your companions, if you would like, will gain two classes per level up. So you could be a rogue and a fighter, and uh, each each time they'll gain a level in each of those. And if you don't want it to, which is the sort of default setting, you, they, don't, they don't gain the saves from both. So like, for example, you get a plus one reflex save uh, from uh, Rogue and you get a plus one reflex save from, I don't know, Hunter or something else. If you went Rogue Hunter, you wouldn't get a plus two on reflex. It just takes the highest one uh, from either one. And so like, for example, uh, Rogue and Fighter, uh, it gets a plus one reflex uh, at one level one. Fighter gets a plus one fortitude at level one. If you do Rogue and Fighter, you'll get each of those, but they won't stack if you as if you had the same one, if that makes sense. Uh, but you can also set it up where it does do that if you'd like it, or you can set it up with a, a few different um, uh, uh, set settings on that. But that's basically the idea. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's a really easy way to kind of uh, re balance the game in a way that you kind of want to add more customization. It's a really fun way to play the game. Uh, and uh, this is also a respect tutorial. So you can do this for all your companions. You can get your companions all the way back to level one uh, without the level ups that they had from when they first started the game. And uh, this is going to be a tutorial on how to do either of those things or both of them if you'd like to do both, which is what I do. If I guest all my characters, I want them to be guest alted all the way from level one. So it's really important to me. Uh, last thing I'll say is, hey, I'm a small YouTuber. I don't want to spend too much time plugging the channel, but I do have a guest alt let's play on this channel if you'd like to check it out. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll get right into it here. So, um, this is the first file. There's all three of these um, links are going to be in the description. Please check the description for these links. The first thing you're going to need is Unity Mod Manager. Going to manually download that right here. Sorry, this is uh, I just did a previous version of this tutorial and I started decided to just restart, so that's why this is already here. But uh, Unity Mod Manager is the first one you're going to want, and uh, we're going to open this up. Uh, and I have WinRAR here. I don't know if you need WinRAR to do this. I don't think you do. Um, I think that if you're just on Windows, this is a zip file. Uh, you can just open your zip just fine. You. I'm going to drag this out to the desktop. You can put it wherever you want. I'm just going to put it in the desktop for now because that's the easiest. Then we're going to X this out. We have the Unity Mod Manager. This is the EXE that we just um, opened up there. And there it is. Okay, so now you're going to want to get go down to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. And then if you click on Folder right here, this is going to open up your folder of your computer, your um, computer files and stuff. And you're going to find where Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous is installed on your computer. That's where the .exe file is. That if you opened it up, that would start the game. If you're playing on Steam, you're going to want to find your Steam Games folder. And uh, it'll be under Steam, Steam Apps, Common. Uh, and then under Common, we'll have all the games that you have installed or that you've previously installed on Steam. That will probably just be in your base, like, local drive. Uh, it can be in different places depending on where you install it. I installed mine to a specific location on my computer because that's where I wanted it, but that's probably where you'll find it. Uh, I'm not going to open up my folders on my computer right here, so um, this is already here, uh, but if you click this and then find it, I, I don't necessarily want to just show every file on my computer and everything. I got all kinds of porn on there, guys. I don't know. Uh, no, I'm kidding, but you know, I don't know. I got stuff. Maybe I want to hide stuff. You don't know. Um, so there it is. So this is... Um, once you see Pathfinder Second Adventure, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous here, then you know that Unity Mod, Mod, Mod Manager is installed correctly. Here you can go to Mods here. I already have all, these are all the mods that I'm using for my Let's Play, so this is why these are already installed. You shouldn't see anything here, uh, and so now uh, it's working right. So then we go over to Toybox here. Toybox is an amazing mod. I highly recommend using this for all different kinds of things, just little cheats and tweaks uh, that make the game more specific to what you want to do with the game. Um, so right now this is really, really important. It probably won't apply to you if you're watching this video in the future, but it could. So one thing that uh, Wrath of the Righteous uh, does is it has has a, a beta branch of the game and it has a main branch of the game and so sometimes there will be different uh, versions of the game that are only out on beta and you only play the beta version if you specifically opt to play that version I don't like playing the beta versions I wait for them to come out for real because I don't necessarily want to have any glitches in my save stuff like that uh, but if, if you are on the beta file then um, it'll say this is for that beta um, a lot of times this won't matter because there will only there won't be a beta branch that this is uh, that this represents so you'll be fine but just make sure that when you come over to file oh also I'm under files here um, just make sure that when you come to files, uh, where is it? Okay, there it is. Um, that you read here because it will tell you if this is for a beta branch only. So this is only for the beta 1.2. I'm not using the beta 1.2, so don't download this one unless you're using the one that it says there. Again, most likely that's probably not going to be there. You won't have to worry about it. But it says to use 1.4.13. So let's just search 1.4.13. And this is it right here. We click manual download download it right there and we'll go ahead and yell on this other this is the respec mod i know that uh, toy box has some inherent respecing in it i don't i never fully gotten it to work the way i want it to work i like to use the respec mod and toy box side by side so that's the way i do it i'll you go over to releases here this is again the exact same thing only for game version 1.2 so make sure that uh you don't get this one unless you're on the beta uh let's see we can go oh wait no let's go back i clicked on this you want to click on releases and version 1. Uh, 
1.10.1. So then I'm downloading this version. Depends on the game you're using. Again, if it's not a beta out, you just want to get the top one. Uh, it will tell you if uh, if it's only for a beta. So now that I've got both of those installed, these are the zip files themselves. Don't open up the zip files at all. Just drag your zip files right here and let go. I'm not going to do it because I've already got these uh, installed. Uh, so I don't want to reinstall them because that'll change all my settings back to what they were. So just drag it over. And there you go, you're already good. Okay, and that's how you install both of these mods on Wrath of the Righteous. If you did that correctly, these will be already installed, you'll be all good, so let's get into the game and uh, I'll be back. Okay, and we are in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Once you have um, uh, Unity Mod Manager installed, it will automatically bring this window up whenever you uh, start up the game. There is a hotkey, okay here, I set my hotkey to Shift plus Z to just uh, open and reopen that. You can set it to whatever you'd like. I use that, it's a very simple way to just get the menu open and back open. So these are the two mods we installed right here, Toy Box and Respec Mod. Uh, and uh, so the first thing, before you start the game up or anything, you wanna make sure that when you go into character creation in a new game that you already have your uh, Respec settings figured out. So this is gonna just be, it used to be a lot more difficult. You don't have to do almost any of the stuff that you used to have to do, you can do it all from the menu, but the one thing that you wanna do is go to level up here, go to multiple classes on level up, and then this is really important. Uh, so this is what I was saying earlier. It can take, uh, this is your hit die, basic attack bonus, saving throws, and skill points. I'm going to put this on largest because I want, again, a rogue gets a ton of skill points. A fighter doesn't get a lot of skill points, but gets a high fortitude save. All these different things that are different in every class. I want whatever is highest in each class to go to be the one that my character gets. So again, I don't want them to stack, which is a uh, sum here. If you want to get, if you if you get two classes that both get a reflex save, you can get them to stack with each other, and that's sum. I think that's a little too broken. So I just go to largest. So uh, I will get the reflex save and the fortitude save from a, from a rogue fighter. Uh, this is primary class, where you'll see what the primary class is, uh, and that means that just the one that you choose as your primary class, you'll only get those. So if a fighter's your primary class, you won't get the reflex save on level one, because fighters don't get reflex saves on level one, uh, even though you're also a rogue. Average, I don't really know how that's calculated, but I mean, we know, I like, I can understand that means that it takes the average, but I don't understand how that really works. But just make sure you fix that, and make sure you want that, uh, you have that what you wanna do. So then we'll go to new game here, and we'll skip through all this stuff quickly as we can. I do want to go to custom just in case that breaks something. We'll pick this nice lady here. Okay, so this is the first that's important thing. So the primary class or the secondary class that you choose is the one that you want to click the checkbox for. So let's say I want to be a cleric is my secondary class. My primary class is going to be uh Slayer, sure. Um, and 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 the one, the only reason that primary and secondary really matters is a those settings that I just showed you. If you have primary class on, b your outfit in the game. Your outfit is always going to be your primary class. So, uh, for example, in my let's play, I'm playing a rogue arcanist who's more of a rogue, but I like the arcanist clothes a little bit better. So, arcanist is my primary class. And there are also a few dialogues in the game I think that uh, recognize what you are. And I think that those dialogues are probably going to go with your primary class, but I don't know that for sure, and I haven't confirmed that. But that's really the only difference. It doesn't make a difference at all besides any of that stuff. Um, so you don't click the box on your primary class. You click the box on your secondary class, you click your primary class as you would in any Let's Play, and then you just click Next. And uh, whatever. And then here, you will know if it's working. If it's not, this is the most important thing. If it's working, you'll see both of your screens here. Uh, one and one, your level one Slayer, level one Cleric. If it's not working, only one of these will be there or there'll be a problem there. That's how you know for sure from right there. And with all of this, look, I'm getting all the things from both um, from both of my classes here. So um, uh, I can't remember exactly. I, I think slayers get maybe an extra feed or something, and uh, uh, like you know, clerics get all this other stuff. So this has this is a level up from everything you want, and all of the and both of those classes are gonna all be here. So uh, we'll just go with basic. Uh, we'll just skip through this as quickly as we can. Come on! Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, okay, and you can set your skill points however you want, whatever. Uh, make sure that, um, actually, no, that doesn't matter at all, uh, what I was about to say. And, uh, okay, one, two, three, four. So, as you see, I think the Slayer probably has the higher skill points, so that's why I have the amount that a Slayer would have. I haven't just confirmed that Slayers get four, but whatever. Uh, and you can get any feat that either of your classes would be able to pick. And... Oh, why can't I pick a deity this isn't supposed to happen what happened <laughs> well apparently this tutorial is uh, not great hold on um, this has never happened before I've never I've never actually respect my own character as a cleric but uh, maybe something to do with the specific classes that I pick hold on let me just go with rogue um, Ah, see, so when I when I went to Rogue, I got three more, see. Um, 
Why is that happening? Let's try this. Of course, I picked. I, I tried to be. I tried to be fancy and pick one that I've never done before, like cleric. And apparently, I'm having some issues with this already. So there. Even if my even if rogue was my secondary class and cleric was my primary, I still got the same amount of kill, skill points there. Um, okay. So oops. Okay, so this is back working again. I'm not sure what just happened there. Um, so I don't know. There's a, that's the one thing that I was gonna also say is that this is always a very touch and go process. It might be... No, I don't know. Uh, this is always a very touch-and-go process, um, and there's always going to be little bugs and errors that you run into uh, doing this. I, I, I've been doing this in Wrath of the Righteous. I've been doing this in Kingmaker for a long time, and there are always things that I can't explain. For example, one time I was respecting Camellia, and her amulet came off, and I saw her alignment, and it spoiled me. I don't know. That's never happened before. It never happened again. I don't know. There's always going to be weird stuff. If you have a question about something that's going wrong, um, just sh shoot me a comment, and we'll try to we'll try to workshop that. Always go to the tw uh, mod user general Discord in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous just discord uh and there are always like a bunch of them. mostly the mod authors hang out there and they're awesome people they've helped me out with so many things in the past getting this stuff working and so you comment on my video go go to that discord and uh you can work out workshop issues like this i'm gonna keep this in the video because i do think it's important to just show how this process can always be weird i, I don't know what just happened where it didn't let me choose my cleric things i've never had that issue before i've i've uh, leveled up other people as clerics that's never been an issue before but again who knows? It just happened this time. I don't know what that is. So we'll move forward here, and our person's gonna be named Good 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 All right, complete. So I'm gonna come back. Uh, uh, we'll pause the video here, and we'll come back when we get to our first companion, Sila, because at this point, this is all done. We have a level one uh, rogue cleric, um, and um, when we get to Sila, then I'll show you how to do companions as well, how to respect them, and how to level them up, and all that stuff. So I'll see you in a second when we get Sila. All right, and here we are. We have just picked up Sila, our first companion. I just want to reiterate um, or re rephrase something that I just said. Uh, this is always a process that has issues, but I've played um, through a lot of this game, guest halting twice actually, and uh, I've never had any issues that were a game breaking or B, that persisted into, like, general play. Uh, so th the issues that I had were always during the process of guest alting and respecking, in which little tiny bugs come up here and there, and I have to figure something out and work something out, workshop things, maybe on people on Discord. Uh, but it has never really hampered my experience. I really highly encourage people not to get... Um, uh, you know, uh, dis dis dismayed from doing something like this, uh, because I think that it it's actually... Um, it's not like once I get it figured out, once I get my characters respect and I go into the game, everything works exactly as intended. Everything's fine. It's just a few times little things will come up while I'm doing the respecking or the guest alting itself. So I just want to say that. Um, and uh, also, I uh, uh, wanted something else, but I don't remember what it was. So I think we're good. Let me look at my. Oh, that's another thing. Quickly, with Toy Box here, you might get a blueprints loading thing here for a while when you first open it up. Just let that load, um, and it'll get to 100%, and then you'll be good. Uh, there might be a few things if you do it before then. I don't know for sure, but I would just recommend just uh, not, not taking that chance and just letting it load all the way. So, now that we're in the game, we have Sila here. As you can see, my character is a level 1 cleric, level 1 rogue, and Sila is only a paladin here. So, uh, this is going to be how to respec your character. Um, if I want to do my main character here, uh, it's really important to make sure that you have the right amount of build points for your character. So 25 is the base. Uh, you can always do way more if you want to respect them with a lot more. If you keep it at zero here, they'll respect with zero skill points. You have to come back out and do it again. I also have free respect clicked here just so that I don't have to um, pay money every time I respect. And uh, I also always do um, retain portrait, retain voice, uh, stuff like that. Um, for my character. I actually don't really ever respect my character because once I do it in the beginning, I'm fine with it. Uh, but basically that's how you do that. Um, once you click respec, it'll go back to the character creation menu from there. Uh, so then this is the real hard part is uh, respecting companions. And there's a bit of a thing on this. I don't know if this is an interaction between respec mod and toy box or why this always happens, but there's a bit of a weird thing that I'm going to show you here in just one second. Uh, but basically, make sure you click original stats here. It's important because if you don't, then they're going to have none of their stats. Uh, and if you click original stats, then uh, they'll just have the stats they have. You can also always give them more stats, uh, but I always like to just have them have the original stats um, and uh, free respec. And then I never do any of these other things because I don't want to break anything. I don't want to choose their background a deity. That might work, but it might not. Who knows? So uh, yeah, so now we just click uh, submit. And we are officially respecing Sila here. So here's the thing. Here's the small bug with this. So Sila is already a paladin. If you're respecting someone, in, in if you're doing guest alt uh, during a respec, and you're one of their two guest alt classes is their actual official class, then it will not work. Uh, but there's a way around this, and it's very simple. But it's just a little bit more work. So see here. I've got, um, oh no, no, you can do it if you don't make their main, if you make their secondary class their real class, uh, 
like if I make her secondary class paladin, it works fine. Um, as you can see here, it works just fine. I was just showing that to show like maybe that does work because I haven't tested it like that. So it does work. I'm glad I, I, I tested that just now. Um, but if you make their primary class paladin, it doesn't work. And you usually want to make their primary class their real primary class because that affects how they dress. So I want Celo to look like a paladin. I don't want her to look like a ranger, for example, here. So um, this is a problem. This isn't showing ranger here. It's only showing paladin. And that's an annoying bug. I don't know why it happens. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or I'm missing something, but there's a very easy fix for this. And basically what you want to do is respec them twice. Uh, so the first respec, you'll make them, let's see, a druid ranger. I'll make her a druid ranger. Um, and uh, we'll just go through all of that. And then once you have done that... Oh, wait. Also here, make sure that they're... Um, their bonus is the one that you want it to be. So, for example, Sila's uh, uh, racial bonus is strength. So, if you don't change that and you keep it at the default because it's wisdom, because we're playing a druid, they think we want wisdom, um, which we might. If you want to make sure they have the actual stats they have in the game, just change uh, racial bonus to what their correct one is. You can look up online to see what their racial bonus is. Sila's uh, is always strength. So, just make sure you do that and she'll have the right stats. Um, and uh, there we go there. Uh, and so basically what the reason we're doing this is because then her default class now will be druid ranger So now we can make her um, Whatever else we want her to be. Uh, I'll just I don't want to mess anything up with it. Uh, animal companion I mean animal companions work. It's just that no reason to even put one on there right now put an extra wrench into the works and we don't even want one uh, and there we go so now Sela is correctly a druid ranger and now that she's a druid ranger if we respec her one more time we can make her a paladin like she should be and I think I made her... Actually, I made her a fighter paladin, but the, for the first level, I made her a rogue thug paladin, just to give her one level in rogue. Come on. There we go. We will turn off ranger. And now we can click paladin, and everything works as intended. Paladin, fighter, boom, boom, boom. Her primary class is paladin, so that's what a clothes she'll wear. And from there, we can do everything normally. And this is pretty much it. So we get a feat from, oh my, if you do Paladin Fighter, you get a feat from, uh, you get three feats because you get the, uh, oh actually, that's just if you get Fighter. A Fighter Human gets three feats at the beginning anyway. But if you do Rogue, I think they get a extra feat. Maybe that, maybe that might be level two. I don't know. But uh, sometimes you'll get like a bunch of crazy feats by doing this. But that's, that's, that's fine. Uh, I usually balance this by playing at a much higher difficulty than I would normally play. And there we go. She is a Paladin Fighter. So that's how you do your companions. Make sure you respect them twice if you want them to have the original class that they had as well as one other class. And uh, again, I don't know why that's a thing, but it is. So one more thing I'm just going to walk through here is this uh, screen here for party. Because sometimes maybe if you update Toy Box or if something weird happens, it will not consider you guest alted. So for example, if I unclick both of these guest alt boxes, then it thinks that she's level two uh, because she has two levels. And boom, uh, both of my characters actually here, it, it just put both of them at level two. So if you ever have a, if you ever have a time when you have double the level, like you have, a, let's say you're a level seven cleric rogue, like way later in the game and you come in your game and you're like, oh, I'm level 14. Sometimes this happened to me after an update or something, or like my settings get lost, stuff like that. And I'll be level 14. And it's like, oh, that, that's not right. I'm not level 14. Oh my God, my game's broken. It's not. Um, if you just reclick these flags or um, actually I want that one to be the guest alt one. Uh, and then go back into the screen. There, she's level one again. I should probably do that. I don't know how the main character got undone, but um, we can... Oh, wait. Let's see here. Oh, here. Config. That's where it was. Uh, we Somehow, one of these didn't get guest halted, so there you go. Level one. Level one. Um, so uh, it's always uh, customizable there and it will automatically it will automatically put your level at what these levels are here As long as one of these is guest halted as it's supposed to be so that's basically it um, again There are I, I just want to there are gonna be small things that come up There are gonna be issues that you have uh, there was an issue especially early on where it would change your main character to not be your main character anymore um, But again all of these things always have workarounds the people on the discord are super nice And I like to think I'm kind of nice too if you ever want to comment uh, you have a question and if I can't answer it We'll go over to the Discord. We'll try to figure it out there. Um, and and uh, again, I've never run into a game breaking bug. I've never run into anything that has major ramifications from a whole playthrough and broke my game, anything like that. It's things that might need to be ironed out here and there. And I can always just reload back to an earlier save or change a setting, and everything can go back to the way it was in case anything does happen to go wrong. I really, really recommend doing guest alt builds. If you want to put your difficulty really high on um, some of the highest difficulty and then make all your characters uh, guest alt, that's a really fun way to play. And that's how I play uh, because it gives you way more customization. It lets you, like, um, uh, you know, 
one thing that I always say is like I like to really customize my character, but I like them to also be uh, lore friendly and in with the role play. So Sila is going to be a paladin. Sila, that's who she is. But I like to customize her a little bit more. But I don't want her to lose that essence of who she is. That's why I really like guest salting because it lets you do that. Um, and so that's kind of a it's just a, it's an important thing for me. Something else that um, also to keep in mind is, for example, if you want to play a uh, uh, there's two if you want to play a monk barbarian, for example, you probably can't because monk is lawful and barbarian is always chaotic. And uh, and so there's a setting in here to ignore that um, on on uh, when you're going through the level up screen. That setting has not worked for me in the past. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and so uh, that's just something to keep in mind. There is a setting to change that, I believe. Under level up here, you can do ignore um, so one of these ignore ignore alignment when choosing a class. Uh, this has worked for me sometimes, and it's also not worked for me sometimes. So I just want to throw that out there. Try it. If it doesn't work for you, um, maybe try to get it figured out. What I do is just I don't put two people. I don't put a person in a class where they have opposing alignments just to make sure I don't have to deal with that. Uh, and uh, it, there was only one time where I really wanted to do that, and I ended up being like, yeah, I'll just not do that. So, anyways. Thank you all for watching. Like I said, please, hey, give me a view, give me a like, please. I'm, I, I want some more, please. Uh, 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 some porridge. Uh, give me a crumb, please. A crumb of a like. I'm a, uh, a small YouTuber here, so I could use all the help I can get. And I really appreciate you watching this. Hopefully this helped somebody. And uh, yeah, sorry it was a little touch and go. But uh, my first tutorial, so whatever. Thanks. Bye.